The Saudi dynasty relies on several pillars, that is, unity amongst its leadership, its reliance on energy revenues, and its relationship with the religious establishment, which gives the House of Saud its legitimacy. The deaths of Crown Prince Sultan and Najif highlighted an important flaw in the Saudi system. It shows that the second generation princes who have ruled the country for most of its 80 year history are now few in numbers and it's only a matter of time before the third generation princes will step up into the leadership role and this will put uncertainty on a key pillar, unity amongst the leadership. In modern Saudi Arabia's history, the throne has changed hands five times, and every one of those power transitions had its share of internal tensions as the royal family members competed for power. Especially the first two successions were very tenseful. King Saud was forced to abdicate power to his crown prince and half-brother Faisal. This was a key moment in the dynasty's history because it established a rule that seniority was the main condition for qualification. Anyone familiar with tribal Bedouin Arab culture will understand the importance of older brothers. Basically an older brother is like a father, so whoever is the oldest has the most credibility and legitimacy. And what Faisal did was adjust the monarchy to a tribal Bedouin aspect. But he also established an informal rule that the king had to be of leadership credentials. A decade later, Faisal was assassinated by one of his nephews. His brother, Khalid, became the next king. Now, he was not the oldest in line, but his two older brothers lacked the leadership experience. Ultimately, the princes settled their differences for some compensation, and this ensured the stability and durability of the kingdom. Once Khalid became king, he realized that he needed to tweak the balance of power in the various family branches and progenies. The House of Saud started to resemble the imperial harem of the Ottoman Empire, in which full brothers rifled half-brothers and created family factions within the dynasty. You see, the founder of the kingdom, Abdulaziz, had 22 wives. He basically married to every family clan in the Arabian Peninsula and thereby established the legitimacy to rule over the lands. Having these many wives also produced many sons and heirs. Abdulaziz had at least 45 sons. The number of daughters is unknown. Now this huge family quickly divided itself in several factions. The most famous factions in the Saudi dynasty include the family of Faisal, Abdullah's faction and the Sudari clan. Now every king tried to restrict this division in the dynasty by applying various rules and regulations. For example, Faisal appointed a crown prince and also a deputy prime minister. The latter essentially showed who was third in line for the throne. This process was adopted by all the other kings. Another example is when King Fahud introduced the basic law of government, which among other things legalized the throne transition to the third generation. Now prior to this, it was against the law for the king's son to inherit the throne. King Abdullah further developed this system and in 2006 he formed the Allegiance Council which was composed of representatives from family factions and they had the task of electing a new king. Now this sounds good on paper but there is no reason to assume that the candidates will honor the decisions made by a democratic institution. Saudi Arabia simply has no experience with democratic decision making, so it remains to be seen what role the council will play. Now despite all the regulations, there will come a time, maybe within a decade, where a third generation prince will be crowned king. And this shift from second to third generation raises some concerns. There are many third generation princes with important roles, but only a handful have experience in foreign policy and national governance. Another issue is the reaction from other family clans. Shifting from second to third generation is a big step and no family faction wants to be left behind. Equally important is the level of education. Most second generation princes were very low educated and some were content to settle for financial benefits instead of taking a public office. Now considering the higher education level of the third generation, 
there will probably be more contenders fighting for the government positions. A few well-connected third-generation princes include Prince Matayib, son of King Abdullah. He holds the position of commander of the National Guard. Now this is a critical position that his father once held. Another important prince is the governor of Mecca, Khalid bin Faisal, from the Faisal family. He has a strong reputation and a military background. Another famous member of the Faisal clan is Saud bin Faisal. He is the world's longest serving foreign minister. Some famous Sudari clan members are Khalid bin Sultan, Bandar bin Sultan, Muhammad bin Najif and Abdulaziz bin Salman. All of them have distinguished careers and experience in leadership. But this is of secondary importance when it comes down to clan politics. What the Saudis are looking for is a third generation member that will place the development of the kingdom before the welfare of his own family. But it will be interesting to see which of the third generation brothers band together and assert themselves to the throne. These factions fully realize the rivalry between them and when King Abdullah passes away there will be a new game of thrones for the third in line. This new reality could destabilize the pillars of the House of Saud. Even with a little foreign intervention, it could have devastating consequences for the country. This was a Caspian report by Mishirvan. Thank you for watching. And Sagal.